<laughs> wow. Hi. How you doing? You lost? Could be. Could be. Come on in. Um, sorry to bug you at home, but there wasn't time to wait for you to get back to Washington. I'm there next week. I'm on a bit of a deadline. It's a filing deadline. Oh, but Josh, Josh, Josh. Yeah. It's a little crazy, I know. I'm not running for Congress again, Josh. Now, you came a long way. I'm sorry about that, but it's just... I'm not, not talking about Congress. Matt, where's the box with the tinsel, honey? Have you seen it anywhere? So... Would this be a package deal? The budget? No, I've been thinking about your nine-point plan. Really? Yeah, but I would like to add a tenth. What's that? You. The filing deadline's next Thursday. I'm in, if you're in with me. I hereby announce my candidacy for president of these United States. Hang on a minute, hang on a minute. You know, they say democracy is uh, how we choose the guy who gets the blame. Well, I will take the blame, but I will never forget those of you who deserve the credit. Thank you for being with me here at the uh, start of this crazy roller coaster ride. Okay, let's go make us some history. 15 seconds to lie. Stand by to rule VTR. Stand by VTR audio. Coming live in six, five, and roll four, VTR. Three, two. Good evening. I'm running for president. And if you don't know who I am, I wouldn't be surprised. I've been shut out of tomorrow night's debate for suggesting that it actually be a debate. And this is the only ad I can afford. I got in this to improve a broken school system, to fix entitlements, because they're going bankrupt, to expand health coverage, because it'll save money if fewer people show up in emergency rooms. What I've found is that presidential campaigns aren't about these things. They're about clawing your opponent's eyes out so long as you don't get tagged for it. So how about this? I will never say anything about my opponents or anything about anything without saying it myself right into the camera. You might not get to hear much of me, but when you do, you'll know I stand by it. I'm Matt Santos, and you better believe I approve this ad. One of you is going to be our nominee, so I want both of you to start acting like the nominee right now. No attacks on each other. I'm going to be watching. And if I think you've overstepped the line, I'm going to grab the nearest microphone and say so. And don't be surprised if I endorse the other guy while I'm at it. Are we clear? Yes, sir. Santos turned Russell down. Okay. Okay? Okay, so now you get him to unturn it down. It doesn't work like that. No, it does. I told him to find a way to say yes. You find it for him. You're not hearing me. You're not hearing me. Matthew Santos has had a terrific ride. Improbable, impressive, and over. This is the return to reality. He's Russell's vice president. It's not going to happen. You are going to do this for us, for the president, for your party. I'm not, because I don't agree with it. I told him to say yes. I was wrong. He's twice the man Russell is on his best day, 10 times. And Russell doesn't have that many best days. I'll go tell the president. So is he going to step aside? 
I think so. For Baker or Russell? He's hard to read. Sitting VP should have kicked ass in the primaries. Bennick's gonna mop up the floor with Russell in November. VPs are famous, but unknown. He'll do better once he's outside my shadow. The speaker forced you to nominate Russell because he knew Russell couldn't win a general. Baker's a strong candidate. This thing with his wife will blow over. Isn't it time you pick the successor you want, Mr. President? Should you really be leaving this up to someone else? And I have been asked by people that I respect to take this opportunity to support one of the other fine candidates who have made this race with me to help decide who our nominee will be. But I can't do that. I can't do that because it's not my place to decide who our nominee should be. That decision is yours and yours alone. You know, there's been a great deal made today of Governor Baker's decision not to disclose his wife's minor medical condition. Many people believe that he should have. But I don't believe Governor Baker failed to disclose it because he was ashamed or embarrassed. I think he didn't disclose it because we're the hypocrites, not the Bakers. Because we're all broken, every single one of us, and yet we pretend that we're not. We all live lives of imperfection, and yet we cling to this fantasy that there's a perfect life and that our leaders should embody it. But if we expect our leaders to live on some higher moral plane than the rest of us, well, we're just asking to be deceived. Now, it's been suggested to me this week that I should try to buy your support with jobs and the promise of access. It's been suggested to me that party unity is more important than your democratic rights as delegates. That's right, it's not. And you have a decision to make. Don't vote for us because you think we're perfect. Don't vote for us because of what we might be able to do for you only. Vote for the person who shares your ideals, your hopes, your dreams. Vote for the person who most embodies what you believe we need to keep our nation strong and free. And when you have done that, you can go back to Seattle and Boston, to Miami, to Omaha, to Tulsa and Chicago, and Atlanta with your head held high and say, I am a member of the Democratic Party. See if you can find Josh, huh? And now it gives me a great pleasure to introduce to you the leaders of our party and the next president and vice president of these United States, Matthew Vincente Santos and Leo Thomas McGarry.